What's up everybody, Patrick here, welcome back. Moving on to another question with polynomial inequality. So determine the equation of f of x given that f of x is a cubic function, f of x is greater than or equal to zero when x is between negative four and negative one or when x is greater than or equal to two, and f of x is less than zero when x is between negative one and two or when x is less than negative four, y-intercept is negative 32. Now when you get a question like this, my suggestion is to take this sentence and put it in list form, right? Just so you could see it better. Because a lot of times with these types of questions, what happens is students miss things in the sentence when they're trying to draw the graph and then make the equation, right? So I would go one by one through everything that's said and write it in a list. So first thing is this is a cubic function. What's next? They say f of x is greater than or equal to zero when what happens? When x is between negative four and negative one. And when x is greater than or equal to two. And then the function is maybe just circle this so we know that those are together and then f of x is less than zero when x is between negative one and two and also when it is less than negative four. All right, and then we'll circle this. And then we also have a y-intercept of negative 32. So we'll remember that you don't have to write that down. I'm running out of room anyways. You could write that down at the bottom here. So we have to take this information and make a possible equation of f of x. So my suggestion is, instead of trying to make the equation right away, first graph this. So y-intercept is negative 32, so that's down here. And then notice that they tell you f of x is greater than or equal to zero when x is between negative four and negative one when it's greater than two. And then notice that these numbers are coming up again, this negative four, this negative one and two, when they're talking about when the function is less than zero. So what that means is that those numbers are the x-intercepts of this function. So we got negative four, negative one, and then two. And this is a cubic function, right? So it's either going to have n behaviors from quadrant 3 to quadrant 1, or it's going to have n behaviors from quadrant 2 to quadrant 4. We don't know that yet. But basically, it has to have one of those two n behaviors, and it has to go through all of these uh, intercepts, and it has to satisfy these conditions that we are given. So f of x has to be greater than or equal to zero, meaning above the x-axis, the y values have to be positive, when x is between negative four and negative one. So we know that over here, the function is gonna look something like that, right? The function's gonna be greater than or equal to zero when x is between negative four and negative one, so right here. It's also going to be greater than or equal to zero when x is greater than or equal to two. So right here. So we can be fairly confident just from that piece of information that the n behaviors we work, uh, we're working with is from quadrant uh, three to quadrant one. So we can forget about these right here. Right, so we're done with these conditions here. What about these conditions? f of x is less than zero. So it's below the x-axis when x is between negative one and positive two. So it's gonna be below, and that makes sense as well because it has to go through that y-intercept of negative 32, right? And that negative 32 is below the x-axis, and that happens at an x value of zero, which is between negative one and two. And when x is less than negative four, the function is negative below the x-axis as well. Right, so this graph basically satisfies all these conditions. We got the y-intercept, 
and then we got these intervals, and this is a cubic function, n behavior from quadrant 3 to quadrant 1. So now we can just take this graph and make a simple equation from, uh, from it, right? So we'll have y equals, you always want to put an a value in front, and then just depending on what the x-intercepts are, those are going to be our factors. So this x-intercept of negative 4, that means one of the factors is x plus 4, right? You switch the sign. This one will be x plus 1, and this one will be x minus 2. And then to solve for this a value in front, we have to pick a point on the function other than the x-intercepts, and we're given that point here. And this point is basically 0 and negative 32. So we could plug in negative 32 for y and then 0 for all the x's and just basically solve for that a value. Right? So 0 plus 4 is 4, 1, negative 2. That would give us negative 8a, negative 32. And then to isolate for that a, we would just divide both sides by negative 8, right? So negative 8 and then negative 8. Then those negatives will cancel out and it will be positive. Um, and then 32 over 8, that reduces to 16 over 4, which reduces to, oh no, this is just 4, right? And negative 32 divided by negative 8 is just positive 4 that kind of late. Right? So the equation of this is 4 x plus 4 x plus 1 x minus 2. So that there is our final answer and that makes sense as well that we got a positive leading coefficient, right? If we expand all this 4 times 1 times 1 times 1 gives us positive 4 it makes sense that it's a positive leading coefficient because the end behaviors are from quadrant uh, 3 to quadrant 1. And we got that when we drew this graph to satisfy those conditions. So we can be fairly confident that this answer here is correct.